Thank you everybody for uh, coming to hear the Soul Goal presentation. Uh, thanks to Red Cloud and, uh, and Derek. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story about uh, an emerging copper gold major. We uh, have just uh, discovered 23 million ounces of gold and 11 million tonnes of copper uh, and it's getting bigger in the uh, fantastically unexplored uh, section of the Indian copper belt in uh, Ecuador. I'm going to tell you about now that project is going to endorse our uh, strategy to find the chain of these tier one copper gold projects uh, down uh, the Ecuadorian section of the Andean copper gold. Read that later. Now the uh, first thing I want to point out to you is that uh, we uh, we discovered this project in in 2014 and realising that there was immense potential uh, in Ecuador for these very large uh, tier one projects. We set about identifying uh, a whole chain of them and secured 75 licenses over 14 different uh, projects. That gives us an unrivaled uh, exploration advantage and a, uh, a, a very full pipeline of projects which will uh, ultimately see us turn into a very large production company. It's not just about finding, uh, finding the ore body using uh, great geologists and other geoscientists, it's also about making sure that we get endorsement from the Ecuadorian community at all levels. So we've been uh, working hard at uh, community, provincial and uh, uh, national levels as well and that's uh, also making the government realise that we're uh, here for a long time and very serious uh, about their country. We have a great team of uh, uh, management and individuals and, and board members who all, uh, to one degree or another, uh, invested in the company, being heavily and it helps to drive uh, sharp decisions and uh, means that we're aligned with shareholders because we are. So the preliminary economic analysis on our power came out in uh, mid-May, just gone, indicated four and a half billion dollar NPV is in copper prices of 330 and gold of uh, just 1300 and 26.5% uh, internal uh, rate of return on uh, about two and a half billion dollars of capital uh, for a 50 million tonne a year uh, underground block cave mine which uh, is going to last 55 years and deliver payback in four. So it's a spectacular project. Uh, the, the high grade core which uh, repays the uh, capital very quickly. Our strategy now is to continue to strengthen our share register with um, the addition of uh, uh, more large shareholders, funds and, uh, and corporates um, and to continue to train uh, the community uh, and uh, get the endorsement from Ecuador at uh, uh, national uh, provincial and uh, community and indeed family uh, levels that uh, uh, makes a real difference. So you, you can't just have a, uh, an exploration license these days, you've got to have a real uh, social and regulatory license to uh, operate. We're full steam ahead on the pre-feasibility study at Alcoa uh, and uh, you can expect some uh, interim announcements along the way about a uh, new mineral resource estimate um, advances in the uh, metallurgical understanding of the project and then we'll be culminating with PFS by the end of Q1 uh, next year. To uh, uh, replicate the Alpala discovery we've got this pipeline of, of projects down through the country and we'll be um, adopting a, a sort of gold focus strategy on those. There's high grade gold veins that sit around these copper porphyry systems. We found a few examples of that uh, and we're uh, looking to uh, find some high grade early, early uh, developable resources uh, to bootstrap the development of any of these porphyry systems. We have uh, 1.85 billion shares on issue in a, a market cap um, around uh, uh, US $470 million. Um, we've got $20 million uh, cash in the bank. We have got a, a big program coming up though and we are currently considering a number of uh, financing proposals uh, before us. 
BHP and Newcrest are two of the major shareholders and their presence really endorses uh, Ecuador as a nation, uh, the copper market into the future, the prospectivity uh, of the entire nation and the, uh, the value and uh, likely feasibility of the uh, project at uh, power. I'm not going to dwell on this too much, but <clears throat> basically the uh, the explorers in this uh, company, Steve Gow and ben, ben Whistler and, and Santiago Vaca, have uh, uh, all been given a fantastic environment to work in underneath uh, Jason Ward's project management skills in, uh, in Ecuador. And uh, importantly, uh, we have a, a very experienced uh, uh, Port <coughs> Copper uh, engineer, Eduardo Valenzuela, who's uh, Chilean and knows South America very well, who's instead of in charge of the feasibility studies. We get lots of input from Craig Jones from Newcrest, who are uh, also block caving experts. So we're uh, strengthening our internal management team so we can do this project uh, on our own. Uh, recently put Inga Hoff, my ex Hannon partners, who was working with us for 18 months before that, um, into the uh, uh, corporate and uh, development finance chair. And uh, we're following up with uh, heads of mining, heads of metallurgy, and heads of uh, infrastructure so that we can move this project along without the vagaries of the uh, consultant land that um, usually like to delay things and um, make them harder. So um, we expect uh, the pre feasibility studies I mentioned by the end of uh, Q1 next year and uh, full feasibility by the end of. Uh, 2020. Somewhere along that um, track we will be, or we are working on a conditional uh, total financing package for the development of the mine and uh, as soon as we have that in place we'll be uh, announcing that so we can go straight into development decisions uh, seamlessly when we get to uh, feasibility. Tell you a little bit about uh, Ecuador now, why we um, why we like it uh, so much. If you superimpose the area and the geology of Ecuador over northern Chile, you cover 25% of the world's copper resources and production, and that means that uh, unexplored uh, Ecuador, with the same geology and the same metallogenic belts over 700 kilometres from north to south in the country, holds the same sort of potential. The only reason that it had never been uh, explored really uh, is the weather. In Chile you can see these things from space, there's no cloud, rain, soil, vegetation cover, not so in Ecuador. Um, so we feel a little bit like uh, the conquistadores uh, going into Chile and Peru in the 1600s, except this time we're not using guns and disease to conquer the place. We're using uh, basically aeromagnetics to uh, find these systems and then to find porphyries within them. So our power sits on the um, highly endowed uh, Eocene belt that runs up and down through uh, Chile and Peru. Uh, it hosts such other big deposits as Chuki, Camara and Escondida. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we have every expectation that our power will continue to grow uh, and move up in the world on that um, on that uh, score sheet there of uh, porphyry copper deposits in South America. A little bit about our power the deposit. Um, it's the first of our projects, there will be others, so we're, we're creating a blueprint here to apply to the other exploration targets down through the country. Stockholm owns 85% of exploration is no mining SA or INSA. Um, Cornerstone owns the other 15%. Uh, we fund the project through to the end of feasibility on a debt basis and then Cornerstone has to contribute at 10% uh, or more or dilute to a 0.5% and a return which we can buy for three and a half million. So uh, we are, we have announced an intention to bid for Cornerstone and the uh, documentation for that is uh, imminent. Uh, if we were developing this project in the high and dry Chilean Andes, we'd be ecstatic because it's got a very high-grade core that a lot of them don't have in 
uh, in Chile, it's got uh, uh, lots of gold in there as well. But on top of all of that, if that wasn't enough, uh, it's fantastically uh, endowed by, uh, endorsed by uh, great infrastructure in and around it. So we've got a hydroelectric power scheme, uh, just 30 k's to the east, a sealed highway through it. Uh, we've got uh, ports down on the, uh, on the Pacific coast, an international airport three hours away, uh, and a river that runs by it, so we don't have to build a desalination plant a couple of hundred kilometres of, of pipeline. Um, all of these uh, capital advantages explain why uh, the project only has a, uh, an estimated pre-production capex of between 2.4 and uh, 2.8 billion. And it's one of the great advantages of Ecuador generally, the great infrastructure. Uh, and of this project in particular. We start with the uh, magnetics, it picks up the, the magnetite in the, uh, the porphyry systems. Uh, we look for complexity, um, and then we go to the spot fires, which is where we expect to find the ore bodies. We look for manganese holes, um, molybdenum and highs, which tells you a porphyry system instead of just a vein system. And, uh, and then we look for high composite ratios. And um, this is uh, the very first part of the exploration and discovery blueprint um, that we developed at our power. That leads to um, man portable drilling. Uh, we can now get down to about 2,800 metres uh, with man portable reef. And we've got some extraordinary intersections uh, which sit comfortably uh, amongst some of the, the world's great mines like uh, Grassberg, uh, Oetolbi, Cadia. Uh, Los Alfatos, Speeches, there's quite a number of uh, other porphyry copper mines with similar sorts of intersections. We, uh, we discovered the 23.2 million ounces and uh, 11 million tonnes of copper for, in, in, uh, in gold equivalent terms, a, a dollar forty-seven an ounce for 85 million ounces and in copper equivalent terms, 0.34 per cent per pound. Uh, for 34 billion pounds of copper. So, very efficient exploration uh, program and uh, the resource is still growing. Uh, we haven't found the edges of it yet. We're working on turning most of it from inferred to indicated for the pre-feasibility study. The economics on the project are assisted by the high-grade core of 420 million tonnes at 1.47% copper equivalent. and. Uh, uh, that, uh, that really gives you the fast uh, payback and then dumps uh, somewhere around a, a billion dollars a year for the next eight years into uh, the company's coffers after cost and tax. Uh, the ore body is vertically elongate, which is uh, a great configuration from a block cave uh, point of view. Uh, we are working on mineral resource estimate number three at the moment, which will make it bigger and uh, there's a long section looking uh, to the east uh, through the ore body. It's getting, um, uh, it gets deeper and more extensive uh, in the northern, northwestern part of the ore body. We'll be accessing it through a, uh, a three kilometre long twin uh, five and a half by five decline. Uh, one will run conveyors, the other one will have vehicular access in it. Uh, it comes in at around about 18 or 1900 metres underneath the ore body and uh, gets some significant advantages from the topography there, helping keep the, uh, the decline uh, shorter than it otherwise would be on, on flat uh, terrain. As I mentioned before, it's, uh, it'll be a 50 million tonne a year underground block cave mine. Um, go for 55 years, pay back in just under four, uh, pre-production capex of between 2.4 and 2.8 billion. Uh, we're constantly looking for ways to uh, cut operating costs uh, and increase revenue through metallurgical recovery <coughs> and byproducts. Uh, it's relatively insensitive to uh, capital costs uh, and it's obviously sensible to revenue and everything else. So, IRR of about 26.5% and the net present value of 4.1 4.5 billion. Uh, at current copper prices, it's still $3.3 uh, billion. Uh, and that compares 
uh, frighteningly with our current market cap of just under 500 million. So um, we're in a bit of a dangerous situation, we're a terribly undervalued asset. Um, we're in that horrible uh, value valley section between discovery and development. Um, we are uh, looking at uh, peak, peak gold production of about a uh, million ounces a year and uh, about 440,000 tonnes of uh, copper and uh, uh, that's uh, obviously lower on an average basis but it's still pretty substantial uh, production, 200,000 tonnes of copper and 440,000 ounces of uh, gold a year for the first 25 years. This is what the cash flow graph looks like and you see that uh, beautiful return in, uh, in the first four years, pay the capital back uh, and then you've got uh, another eight years of uh, plus billion dollar uh, uh, after cost, after tax surpluses straight into the bank account. There are tax concessions in Ecuador for uh, people who reinvest uh, capital in, in projects in Ecuador. We will obviously be looking to reinvest um, surplus cash earnings from this project into uh, new developments. And that will, uh, that will mean that we are uh, uh, saving tax, uh, building wealth, uh, and getting more and more endorsement from uh, Ecuador generally. It's all afforded by this stuff, the very high grade core of the project. Um, the high grades, the high copper grades uh, uh, have disproportionately high gold grades with them too, which is great for the early part of the project where it's easier to, um, to uh, uh, finance gold streams. So, the project's the, the fifth best in the world from an undeveloped uh, uh, underground uh, copper gold point of view, uh, and it ranks number 21 um, uh, on the basis of, of that development. So it's, uh, it's a very significant uh, project indeed. We expect to find more and more of these things through four wholly owned subsidiaries covering 75 licenses on, um, on 12 major mineral systems across 3,200 square uh, kilometres, and that is uh, yielding some um, some very interesting early results. Uh, the projects are scattered down through the country at the same spatial frequency as you see the porphyries in uh, in Chile. So uh, similar geology, similar endowment, but it's gold rich. Um, importantly, everywhere we pan uh, in these systems, we find lots of magnetites. I mean, uh, there's porphyries there with gold in them. Uh, and they act proper on the side of the creeks and you knock a bit off and they're all full of copper. Uh, so uh, exploration is a dream. Um, we've got a camp in the north which houses the uh, Chical and Rio Amarillo uh, porphyry and uh, epithermal gold uh, prospects around uh, Cascabel and, and a very high grade gold project Blanca which is uh, on the northwestern side of it. And uh, I'm not going to dwell on this too much, but very high grades, uh, a bulk tonnage and a high grade vein system. Um, and I just want to draw your attention quickly to uh, a couple of these uh, porphyry uh, projects, particularly uh, uh, Porvenir, which we're about to drill, which has an intersection three times as long as Alpala in the creek. And, um, uh, that's with flame magnetics on that model up target. Um, and then uh, there's another one uh, in the Cisne Loha tenement uh, group down south uh, where we have uh, an antithermal gold system in the northern part, but very interesting with very high grade outcropping, consistently outcropping copper porphyry system called the Salem Prospect, uh, which we're very excited about. Now it has a coherent uh, set of outcrops that sit within a 1.2k long and 700 metre wide uh, zone of high grade mineralisation that ranges um, up to 4 grams gold and about 5% copper. So, very exciting prospect there. Uh, I have, I've run out of time. Come and ask me questions uh, after I'll speak to Anna or Eliza and the centre table there, and I'll, I'll be uh, happy to help you out. It's a great opportunity.